Loading in super abrasive wheels is really more problematic than it is in aluminum oxide wheels. Not necessarily because they load more, but because in an aluminum oxide wheel, your wheel loads, but it wears away, or you dress it away. And it loads, but you wear it away, you dress it away, not a problem. But with super abrasives, the wheels don't wear very quickly. So your loading accumulates. You don't dress your wheel, you accumulate some more. You don't dress it away, it doesn't really wear away, and it accumulates some more. So over time, you can get really nasty loading. Number two, super abrasive wheels tend to use finer grit sizes. Finer grits mean less porosity. Less porosity means less space for the chips to form. So you're more likely to get loading. This is a picture of a typical loaded wheel. This is a resin bonded CBN wheel that was used to grind hardened steel. I went to the company. They said, oh, we've got loading problems. Looked at the wheel. This is an SEM picture. And we can see, yeah, there's a big glob of loaded steel right there. You can also check for loading just with a regular microscope. This is a regular optical microscope photograph of a resin bonded CBN wheel, grinding hardened steel also. And what we see here is a big glob, or actually several big globs of loaded steel. Okay. So, what's the best way to cope with loading or to deal with it? Well, you can try a more porous wheel, you can try dressing the wheel sharper, or you can try a lot of different things. You put on a cleaning nozzle, but you have to buy a new wheel, or you have to buy new equipment. The one method I've had the most success with is just by improving the cooling. Getting that coolant velocity to match the wheel velocity. And here's why. During grinding, we've got all these hot, stringy chips coming off of the grits. Now these hot stringy chips are sticky, and sticky things like to stick to other things. So some of these sticky chips stick to the wheel, and then here come more chips that are hot and sticky, and they stick to the chips that are already embedded in the wheel. And after a while, you've got atrocious loading. But if we have good cooling, meaning we have coolant within the pores of the wheel, those hot stringy sticky chips come flying off of the grits and all of a sudden psh, they're quenched by coolant. If they're quenched by coolant now they're not hot, they're cold, they're not sticky, they're not ductile and they're more likely just to sort of fly off with the wheel instead of getting embedded within the wheel. And if a few do get embedded, well the other chips that are coming are now cold and brittle and not sticky, so they're less likely to stick to those that are embedded in the wheel. So here's a change that I made, a very simple one, that basically solved the problem with loading. This is a company I visited. They were just doing basic surface grinding. They had horrible loading problems, and they were using a copper tube, flood cooling, low velocity, high flow. And I said, we've got to get that velocity up. We've got to quench those hot chips. So they didn't want to invest in new nozzles and new pumps and other things. So all we did was we took the existing copper pipe, put a shim in it, squeezed it down on the vise, and made the opening very small. This maintained back pressure, and now we're firing out coolant at a much higher velocity, closer to the wheel velocity, maybe not 100% there, but closer, and quenching those cool chips. The end result was the loading problem disappeared just because we had coolant there. It was a crude, simple, quick method, but it did the job. Quite often in grinding, the crude and simple solutions are often the best. And this was crude, this was simple, and it worked wonders.